نستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان استقى الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار My dear brothers and sisters in Islam this reminder this talk this khutbah today inshallah is about something that gets the young and the old the healthy and the sick the knowledgeable and the ignorant the one who is anticipating and the ones that are oblivious to it it is something that we cannot escape no matter how hard we try it is something that we cannot afford no matter how much we prepare for it it is something that has taken our fathers and great grand grandparents it is something that awaits for all of us it is something that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the hadith that was narrated by abu huraira radhiyallahu anhu he says what could mean remind this a lot remind this matter a lot showing it is significance it is importance for us ummata nabiyyina muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to remember and to mention and there are benefits countless benefits of mentioning and remembering this thing and there are detriments and there are pitfalls to the mankind and to the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they don't mention and forget about this matter what is it ikhwati billah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran in countless places wa ma tadri nafsun ma taksibu qada wa ma tadri nafsun bi ayyi ardin tamut indeed it is the death that we speak of no soul knows what it will go what it will be earning tomorrow and no soul knows which land it it will die 
my, bro my brothers and sisters in Islam, today we're here in this masjid. May Allah preserve it and the management and the community. A year ago, a month ago, a decade ago, we were not thinking that we would be sitting here. We were not thinking and planning to sit right here. It is by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that gather us right here at this moment and at this time. And it is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whose balance no one can change that will send the angel of death and it will take our souls in a disappointed time and no one can delay it my brothers and sisters kullu nafsin da'iqatul maut we have to mention this to ourselves to our spouses to our children and to our relatives Yes, when we meet the relatives and the family, it is time of enjoyment, at times of joking around. But, ikhwati fillah, this matter is important. And the more we forget, the more we are heedless to it, the less we do for ourselves to prepare ourselves for the day to come in the day that is approaching. Ikhwati fillah. We know that this matter of death will come. Yet, we don't seem to be prepared for it. We find in the newspapers and in the media countless deaths the sick, the old, those who were struck in car accidents and so forth. To us, Ikhwati Fillah, they met their death at this appointed time. It was meant for them to die in that way. It was written for them to die that way. Do we know where we're going to die? Do we know when we will be taken to the grave? We have to think ikhwati fillah. And we have to ponder. And we have to sit. And remember that the angel of death does not call with appointment. It will come. How many die sitting on their couches? How many die at their workplaces? How many die in the best place while making sujood to Allah the Most High? We ask Allah to make the husn al khatima to give us the husn al khatima and to make us die in a state and a place pleasing to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, this matter of death the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to remind his companions who also used to remind the companion, their companions and the generations that followed them. Ibn Umar, Rahimahullah, he used to say, if you approach the morning, do not anticipate the evening. And if you approach the evening, do not anticipate the morning. And it is true. Who among us, my brothers and sisters? And we have to be frank with each other. And everyone should account and hold themselves accountable. And say, am I really thinking about this? When will the angel of death come to me? What state will I be in? The one who is negligent to this, the one who is unaware or forgets will not repent from their sins. This is one of the bid falls. 
They will not repent. They will not amend the relations and the kinship, the problems in the kinship and friends because they are thinking or were thinking that we have long time. There's enough time to go and fix the things that we have broken or repenting to Allah the Most High. Or we may not be even satisfied with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for us. The provision, the health, the family, the wealth. We may not be satisfied. Hence, not even thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the na'am that he has given us. Because we think we're here for a long period of time, for many years. And we're thinking, what can I accum accumulate? What can I gather? What can I build? What can I leave behind for my progeny? Not knowing maybe it is just a few minutes later that the angel of death will come and that is the qiyamah for that person. When the person dies, Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu, whenever you find him in a grave, he used to weep. He used to cry so much that his lahya, his beard, will be wet. And then they will ask him, what is wrong? Why are you crying? And he says, death is the first stage of qiyamah for that person. This is the first stage of the qiyamah. The one who dies, his qiyamah has started. Because either when we place that individual, when we place that loved one beneath the earth and leave him alone or her, then their qiyamah starts. The grave becomes either a jannah from the jannah or it would be a hole from the hellfire. Ikhwati fillah. Let's remember and ponder that this death is sometimes a bit far. We think it is happening to others. It is not in my neighborhood. It is not in my family. Therefore, we continue life as it is. Delay in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For instance, Hajj, Ikhwati fillah. If Allah has given us the wealth and the ability, then it is must for us to perform and visit the Bayt al Atiq, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at least once in our lifetime. How many of us have the means to go, yet we're thinking not this year, few years down the road, and how many were taken before this month, but they have not performed Hajj or even Umrah. And they had the means, they had the ability and the strength, the financial ability and the physical strength that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to this individual. Because they're thinking, I have long life to live. I'm just a youth. I'm just young. I just got married. I just bought this. I am going to wait when I become a, an old man, an old lady. Then I will stand to perform the hajj. We don't have any contract with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as to when our death time will come. And what will we say in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ikhwati fillah wa akhawati fillah, when we stand in front of the judge of all judges, the one that nothing is hidden from, the one who is aware of everything we do, the one who provided us the physical health, and the wealth that we keep and hoard. What are we going to say in front of him? And we will be asked, what have you done with the wealth that was blessed with you? What have you done? Did you squander with the enjoyment of this dunya, the temporary, 
enjoyment of this dunya by this, sell this, and the end, we're gone. Ya ikhwati fillah. The dunya, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to tell his companions, leave in this dunya as a traveler. Does a traveler carry too much? Does a traveler build mansions in the way? La. Ya ikhwati fillah. They have a goal. They have a hadaf. They have an objective to reach the next destination. And they only take what they need for their trip. A little bag. A, a little carry-on bag. Few items for them to make them reach their destination. A believer is like that. A true believer. It doesn't mean that we have to abandon our responsibility, ikhwati fillah. It doesn't mean that we have to abandon the responsibility of providing for the ummah, for the, those who are responsible for, and giving it to those who we are asked to give, the weak, those in need. It doesn't mean that. But what it means, is that we don't make this the ultimate goal. And how many of our ummah and the human beings have hoarded so much that they did not even benefit in this dunya and as soon as they have accumulated so much, the angel of death came to them and others benefited what they have been collecting for so many years. And how many of us might have neglected the obligations, including the salah, the foundation of this deen, ya ikhwati fillah. How many of us are stuck at work, doing extra, and so forth, and salat al dhuhr and asr has gone? How many of us? Ya ikhwati fillah, let's get the priority in place. The wajibat, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put on our shoulders. قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ Indeed, say, O oh Muhammad, to the ummah, to his companions, to us, that the death that you flee from, that you run away from, in fact, it will catch up to you, it will meet you. It wasn't long ago that we attended a janazah. And it was the janazah of a senior person. Beside it, it was an infant, a few days old. An infant and a senior. What is the difference? Only a few days, few years, few decades. That's it. And that is all we have, ikhwati fillah. And let it be a lesson for those who passed away, those who we bury with our own hands, be a reminder for us that we're coming. We're just coming after them. And remember the dua, the dua of visit in the grave. What do we say? After we give them salam, we say we are just after you. We are coming after you. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين استغفر الله الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم إخوتي في الله وأخواتي في الله We're talking about the certainty that will approach We're talking about the thing that we cannot afford, avoid And that is death My brothers and sisters, as we mentioned in the past, all of us, we know the centers that bury and have the facility 
to wash the dead and facilitate burying our dead. We should make a, a point to do at least once to carry the dead and to bury the dead from our Muslim community. It doesn't matter whether we know that person or not, that brother or sister. But what it will do, you will get the reward of following the janazah, which is tremendous. One of the rewards, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, the one who follows the funeral procession, they will get the reward as, the, as heavy as the Mount Uhud. Tremendous reward. Not to mention the lessons and the remembrance that we will be getting when we take that soil that we walk upon every single day and we put our loved one and we cover and we walk away from that person until Yawm Al Qiyamah, until the Day of Judgment. When we do that, indeed, this is a tremendous lesson. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu said, Remember death a lot. It dispels the worries and anxieties one would have. It gets rid of the rigidness and the stinginess of, of ourselves when it comes to doing khayr and donations and taking care of the weak and those who deserve it. It gets rid of that. And it puts things in perspective, my brothers and sisters. The priority becomes the priority and the things that have no value becomes the last and the second thing we do. So, ikhwati fillah, sometimes we do forget and we worry about things that may not help us in the long run. And we forget, and we forget the basic things of death when is going to come to me am i ready to die today do i have to repent to allah and we all have to repent to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have to increase the istighfar returning back to allah and seeking forgiveness day and night and it's not hidden from anyone that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do a lot of istighfar in different narrations as many as a hundred times a day. Why? His previous and future sins were forgiven, yet he was asking Allah to forgive him. What about us, ikhwati fillah? We are in need of that much more much more so let's remember that when we are by ourselves or when we are among friends because sometimes we forget and we forget and that is not sufficient ya ikhwati fillah and i like to mention in the next what m remains of this very short reminder to myself and then to all of you is another thing that is in loop into remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remembering how short this life is. It is the use of electronic devices in our homes in our, by ourselves. The electronic devices that we keep in our hands, the phones, the tablets, and, and everything else. It is, they become prevalent and they have taken most of our time just I think it would be fair to say in every house there are many devices blinking and our youth and our children are captivated by them even ourselves 
we're not free from it. Just flipping, watching, playing, whatever else we do. If it is not beneficial, we have to spend a lot of time. I'm mentioning this to you because this is something that the youth of our Ummah is suffering from right now. Many of them don't even sleep until 1 a.m., 2 a.m., though they go to bed early. They don't sleep because this thing keeps them awake. So I am giving myself as a parent and then to you, my brothers and sisters, please take these devices away from children when it, become, when it comes to their bedtime. Keep it away from them for indeed it is not benefiting them. Not their health and not their akhirah in the long run. And let us also, adults, watch our time that we spend with these devices and all use these tools of the dunya for a beneficial cause, for a beneficial thing. Whether we use it to learn, to communicate, to call the family members to keep the kinship as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned to us. Keep the kinship of the family and keeping the ties as our Shaykh mentioned in the last khutbah it is not for the one who is already keeping ties with you it is not for the one who is calling you checking upon you it is the one who has forgotten you it is the one who does not answer the phone it is the one that may slander and hurt you with words or action that's the one to keep ties that's how you get your reward, ikhwati fillah. So electronic devices and remember death because it is sufficient lesson for the believer so that we are not short in our worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I may ask the musalleen if they can move forward and allow our brothers who are standing to get some room, inshallah, tafassahu, move forward, my brothers and sisters, so the brothers don't have to stand for a long time, barakallahu feekum. And again, uh, last word, ikhwati fillah wa akhawati fillah, is that wherever you are, whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with wealth, or has blessed you with free time, use it for your akhirah. Many youth have free time. They don't have a lot of wealth, but they have free time. And time, my brothers and sisters, is a wealth that Allah has subhanahu wa ta'ala given us. It is a wealth, time. It is, in fact, more precious than wealth. Because when you lose time, when the appointed time has come, when the angel knocks the door, all is done. The door is closed. We're not getting back. And if there is anything that the believers who will dwell in Jannah will regret and will wish they would have more, it's time, ikhwati fillah, so they can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so they can seek the pleasure of Allah, so they can attain a higher level in Jannah. This is the time. And the angel of death may come to us any time. We don't know that. So let's act now what we anticipate tomorrow. Barakallahu feekum. Ya ikhwati fillah. And make dua for those who are afflicted. Many times in the center we get calls. This person is in surgery. This person is very sick. So make in sujood. Make it for the ummah. Not just for yourself. For the ummah. For every dua that you make for the general folk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for it. So remember your brothers and sisters, Allahumma izz al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma izz al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Wa adhill al-Shirk wa al-Mushrikin. Allahumma rudd al-Muslimin ila dinik. Wa sunnat al-Nabiyyika Mustafa alayhi salatu wa salam. Ibad Allah, inna Allah ya'muru bil-adli wa al-Ihsani wa iqam salam.